My journey to WWE superstardom began with some light cardio, a salad, and a protein shake. Now I was jacked beyond words and 100% natural. The ladies loved me. I, however, was not happy with my face. It wasn't jacked up enough, and so I fumbled through the templates to find something that hit the spot. Sadly, nothing really did, but eventually I ended up with this. Though Slavic Dad <laughs> would have been a fun choice too. I gave myself two ridiculously bright blue eyes that I copped off wish and then covered myself in some absolutely revolting vascularity. It was really, really gross. I love it. I then cracked out my trusty old hammer and chisel and got ready to create the most horrific slab of nightmare fuel that this WWE series had ever seen to date. Nevertheless, this was the result. Also, rather than putting a suit on like a normal person, I got a full body suit tattoo that would never wash off. I also asked the tattoo guy to put welcome home macho man with an arrow pointing to my butt because I discovered a move in this game where you literally rub your butt all over your opponent's face. And then I also chose a red and yellow color scheme that had me looking like bald Ronald McDonald on steroids. I then set all of my names to Hitman and my walkout name to Awesome Unbreakable T-Rex Willie. I also set my hometown to Chad because I am a massive Chad and chose Powerhouse as my fighting style because I actually was one. I mean, look at me. Then feeling super sassy and ready to go, I goad. The game then got underway and I was immediately greeted by the bump on my screen, which made me think for some reason that I was pregnant. As it turned out, however, the bump was the name of a TV show about the strange lump I had growing out of my left butt cheek. It seemed that Summer Slam was right around the corner where eight oily, angry looking dudes would be slamming each other for the belt. It was also a wild card and that wild card was possibly me. Meanwhile, however, in an empty WWE arena somewhere in the world, I had broken in through the window and was having the time of my life pretending to be a pro wrestler. That was, of course, until some British fellow came in and asked me who my daddy was and what he did. I said I didn't know because I was actually created in a test tube full of industrial strength bleach and the bodily fluids of 500 great warriors. He told me that he was in the same boat, but that his number was 501. We immediately bonded over this and became best of friends. Then he told me to get out before he called security. Looking at my social media, feed, however, it seemed like the wild card was indeed me, and I was going up against one of the 50 billion Mysterios that have been in the WWE since its inception. But as I made my way out to the ring, I wasn't sure which ring I was actually meant to be heading towards, as my unique eye positioning situation had me seeing about 47 of everything. Weighing in at 600 pounds, awesome, unbreakable, T-Rex. And as for my opponent, well, I'm pretty sure he was actually a character out of GTA 5. The fight got underway with a flying knee to old mate's face. Then I continued to lay into him with whatever these things are called over and over and over again. Ruthless savagery. It was wonderful. Then finally, before ending his career, I gave him the old face meat boot treatment, then pinned him for the three count, which was actually a five count because the dumb refs in these games stare at you for two seconds before even starting the count. Also, I think he might have been dead. Welcome home, macho man. To celebrate my victory, Cody Rhodes offered me an assortment of cookies, cake, and Slim Jims. And then I headed out to the ring for my second fight that night as Owen Wilson was saying hurtful things about me and I needed to defend myself with violence. Somebody touch my spaghetti! But then he reversed my Irish whip and broke my neck on his shoulder. Clearly proud of himself for doing me dirty, he paraded around my unconscious body, making fun of my wonky eyes and the fact that I looked like a living condiment dispenser. But being the tactical testicle that I am, I roly polied him into the spitball Imanari macho roll. And then we furiously <laughs> did whatever this was, which resulted in me winning in front of the WWE universe. Angry about losing, he kicked me in the testicles, then broke my neck again and proceeded to have a mental breakdown <laughs> in the ring. I was perfectly fine, though not a single scratch on me. Backstage, The Miz and my test tube brother were were having an argument over who had the bigger wiener, but it was clear that the real winner of that competition was definitely not me. I had no time for this petty argument though. I had to go out and fight Cody Rhodes for the Universal Championship. But old mate brought fireworks and a pretty sick jacket, and I immediately started to down myself. After all, this was the Universal Belt of the Galaxy, and I couldn't afford to fail. So I charged him with a gonad punch and kicked him in the spine, then crushed his other gonad with my knee and got him into the leg 
spread position where I stomped on his ball bag. Still not satisfied, however, I tossed him into the corner, then proceeded to headbutt him in the sack over and over and over again. But then as I got ready to finish him, he reversed me into the ref, knocking him out cold. That was good for me, though, because he snapped my neck and pinned me, but nobody could count the fall. Then suddenly out of nowhere, Roman Reigns appeared and spear tackled Cody, despite apparently being away on leave in Hollywood filming a movie. He said that he'd switched to a new type of hair oil and wanted to show off its shininess to the WWE universe. Apparently he was a big fan of mine though and so he put my limp unconscious arm over Cody's limp unconscious body just in time for the ref to wake up and make the three count in my favor. Then just like that I was the new WWE intergalactic champion of the moon. And Cody was thrilled. Truth be told though it didn't feel right getting the belt this way and so I met with him out back to discuss a potential rematch. I knew however that if I was going to beat him a second time I definitely needed a new walkout. And so in our next match, I came out like an absolute psycho with my belt wrapped around my face and some dude's, <laughs> some dude's head. The head was actually very pleasant and he said his name was Joe. So I very gently put Joe on the side of the ring because I am a gentleman and then took my belt off my face because I couldn't see where I was going. The joke was on me though because I still couldn't see where I was going. That belt was mine, however, and I was not ready to give it up. Not now, not ever. But just then, as I was really starting to kick it into gear, The Miz came out and told me that I'd been drafted to SmackDown and that the fight was officially cancelled. I couldn't believe it. Then the ref, probably terrified after my horrific walkout, very hesitantly handed my belt back before sprinting out of the building screaming. I also sprinted out of the building screaming shortly thereafter as I was now a SmackDown employee and I was running late for work. Then I headed out to the arena to beat Owen Wilson's ass for the second time. Alas, just as I was really starting to lay it on thick like crunchy peanut butter on toast, The Miz came out of the back and did a little song and dance to try and distract me. Owen Wilson then tried to poo on me, but I reversed him <laughs> and then pooed on him instead. I then spit poison in his eyes and kicked him right in the face. Before finally one, two, and three, bye bye. Then for good measure, I walked outside the ring to where The Miz was setting up a cheeky table for Owen Wilson and slammed him straight through the middle of it. Then made sure to tell the Miz who was the real boss and to eat my shorts before storming out of the arena, clearly not under the influence of crack coqueros. And then I went to discuss the events that had transpired at SmackDown with my test tube brother from Raw. He told me that no matter what happened, always to remember my roots and that I was the ultimate tactical testicle. And so I headed out once more for another weird match where my belt was dangling from the rafters by a rope. I didn't know how it got there or who put it there, but I was very clearly off my head and ready to get it back. So I tossed Owen Wilson out of the ring, I climbed the ladder and I got it down. Then it hit me. I had no idea where I was or what I was doing there. I also had no idea who made my fashion choices for me. But there I was standing in the ring again, dressed like a moo cow, educating the audience on why drugs are bad and why you should never ever take them. But then suddenly a big ugly guy in a red and black G-string appeared out of nowhere and slapped me in the face, then tried to choke me. So I kicked him right in the penis and then beat the absolute poo poo out of him with a wooden stick that I took from under the ring. He then grabbed me by the throat and choke slammed me into the steel steps, breaking my back. Spinal. So I ripped off the stupid outfit I was wearing and tossed him straight into a coffin, where I then proceeded to close the lid on him, trapping him in there for all of eternity, saving my belt in the process and gaining the adoration of all the single ladies in my area. But then Roman Reigns appeared on the TV screen, telling me that he was impressed by my performance, that he was my biggest fan, and that the only reason I had the belt was because he was on holiday and he couldn't wait to come back and kick my ass. I didn't care though, I was too busy for his shenanigans after all. I was the star of an all new WWE gaming segment called Down Up Down Up. But mid broadcast this guy rocked up and said that we'd ripped the idea off of his show which was called Up Up Down Down. That's ridiculous I said. We didn't even use words. Look we used arrows. This man was clearly crazy. In order to decide who got to keep their show he challenged me to a game of WWE 2 
2K24, and I had to play as this bozo. But it was okay, because a steel chair to the head has the same effect on somebody of 60 pounds as it does to somebody of 600. Meanwhile, back in HQ, clearly being written by somebody as goofy as myself, the story had the Miz out of town, and our truth appointed himself as the GM. As a result, he said that I needed to fight him in the car park as part of my performance review. <laughs> yeah, I know, goofy as. So I carried him to the top of this thing and chucked him straight down to the concrete below. But he was still alive, so I launched myself off too. Unfortunately, we both survived, but I did pass the performance review with flying colors. Even more important than my performance review, however, was my wedding. Yes, apparently I was getting married and neither of us even knew about it. Isn't that exciting? But then these two wedding crashes rocked up and said that their wedding was better than ours. I couldn't believe it. So rude. So we just beat the crap out of each other instead. It was very, very romantic. Meanwhile, at Raw, however, Cody had finally won a belt and was celebrating in the ring when me and the boys confronted him to let him know what he had to look forward to at the War Games event next week. But then his boys showed up too and things got a little bit heated. So me test tube brother stepped in to break everything up and I accidentally punched him right in the mouth. Needless to say, he didn't look particularly happy about it. And as it seemed, Karma was not happy either as I had my butt absolutely handed to me at the War Games, losing for the very first time in my professional wrestling career. Fortunately, however, my belt was not on the line, but my pride was. As it turned out, however, Cody was actually a pretty nice guy, and he came over to SmackDown to ask me if I wanted to have a title versus title match with him to give the universe what it really wanted. I said sure, but I assured him that I would cheat to win and that he stood no chance. He said that that sounded like a pretty sweet deal and that he was down. First, however, there was a tag team tournament coming up just around the corner, and if we combined our powers, we could claim ourselves yet another belt. I told him that I was down for that. The fight, however, was no ordinary fight as it had us up against two real Vikings who appeared to have never set foot in a gym in their lives. I then suddenly turned into Cody Rhodes and I did my finish on the Viking and pinned him for three. Then turned into myself again and fought this bozo where I smacked him out real good and got him for the three count too. In doing so, both Cody and myself were now the WWE Tag Team Champions of the entire galaxy. From foes to friends who would have thunk it but then this happened the day the game released out of the three day early access period and everyone else got the game and everyone lost all of their progress that they spent three days getting and like an extra 50 bucks to have access to <laughs> it was great but then when the game started working again I was in the ring rubbing my bum all over my tag team partner's face I can only assume that we had finished the tag team arc of the story and now we were putting both of our belts on the line for the ultimate showdown and despite Cody's best efforts, my Hadouken was way too powerful. So I rubbed my bum all over his face again until I finally won by KO. That meant that I was now the universal champion and also the champion of whatever the other belt was and the tag team champion and the most handsome man in the WWE. I literally had every belt now, but my best mate over here told me that at WrestleMania just around the corner something big was coming up. I couldn't wait. Then skip forward a few days that big thing at WrestleMania just so happened to be Roman Reigns. Yes, he was back from his seven-year hiatus filming a romantic comedy in Hollywood. This was it. All or nothing. All the belts on the line. Would I capture it or just let it slip? Well, pretty needless to say, I beat the absolute bollocks out of him with my high-level ninjutsu techniques that I picked up on a mountain somewhere in Chad. Then I reversed his whip attempt and finished him with his own finisher. The ultimate insult. How embarrassing. But he did kind of get back up. So I cracked out one of these ones and I forced him to tap out. As he slowly walked out of the ring defeated, I asked him if that was all he had and to come back and take it like a real man. But his lungs had clearly <laughs> taken all that he could take. And just like that, I had come to fulfill my destiny and etch my legacy into stone for all of eternity. As the greatest professional farter that had ever lived. Yes, this story was stupid beyond words. I mean, my one. But I promise you, the actual game itself was way stupider. Thanks for watching. Bye.